Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is uh, Kamlesh Kunti. I'm Professor of Primary Care Diabetes and Vascular Medicine at the University of Leicester, based at the Leicester Diabetes Centre. Welcome. Today I will be talking to you regarding hypoglycemia in type 2 diabetes. These are my disclosures. The outline of my presentation is to take you through some of these uh, aspects, prevalence and rates of hypoglycemia, trends of hypoglycemia published over the last few years, consequences of hypoglycemia, the costs of hypoglycemia, and finally, briefly, just interventions to mitigate the risks of hypoglycemia. In terms of the prevalence, there have been a number of studies uh, that have been done uh, over the years. This is one of the largest studies um, uh, globally uh, looking at hypoglycemia in 24 countries. And in this study, uh, we looked at um, incidence and prevalence of hypoglycemia both in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. I'm just showing you the data for type 2 diabetes from this HAT study. The unique thing about this was that patients had prospectively used a diary to record the proportion of people having hypoglycemia. These are pa patients that aged over 18 years who were, had been on insulin for over 12 months. And this is data for 19,563 people with type 2 diabetes. First of all, you can see that 46% of people reported hypoglycemia. At the bottom left, you can see overall hypoglycemia and the right nocturnal hypoglycemia. And these are rates per person per year. So on average, about 20 people were having overall hypoglycemia per person per year, nocturnal uh, around uh, two to four people per person per year. In terms of the severe hypoglycemia rates, these were surprisingly very high. Globally, 2.5 per person per year, and Southeast Asia much higher, 3.4 per person per year. So when people say hypoglycemia is not common, well, unfortunately, it is very common, especially if we ask for it and ask people to do diaries. Um, those rates were thought to be very high. So as part of the HAT study, um, Ulrich Peterson uh, did a systematic review of all uh, literature that had published on insulin uh, treated people with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, uh, and we looked at real world comparative studies. And what we found here was overall, even in these real world studies, the rates were overall high, and we concluded that the HAT data on hypoglycemia incidence were comparable to those from other real world studies, indicating that there is a high incidence of hypoglycemia among people treated with insulin. This is a systematic review that we conducted. Uh, Chloe Edridge, who was one of our students, uh, looking at 46 studies with over half a million participants. So first of all, showing you the data of proportion of people experiencing hypoglycemia. When we look at mild or moderate, about 52% of people on insulin and 33% on sulfonylurea uh, had uh, this prevalence. While if we look at the severe, 21% on insulin, 5% on sulfonylurea, and surprisingly 5% on non-sulfonylurea medications as well. Then we look at the incidence per year. This is incidence per person per year. For mild to moderate overall, it was 19, and for severe, 0.8 per person per year. For insulin, about 23 uh, having mild to moderate per person per year, and about one severe. And sulfonylurea, as one can see, very low rates of severe hypoglycemia. Unfortunately, we didn't have data uh, from the meta-analysis to conclude anything for mild to moderate hypoglycemia. This is the latest study uh, conducted by our group. This is a prospective study looking at hypoglycemia rates in people managed in primary care. I'm showing you here uh, symptomatic blood glucose less than 3 millimoles per mole hypoglycemia, which is a, a high-risk population. Again, we see metformin, no one having this uh, in terms of incidence per person per year, sulfonylurea, very low, low rates of 0.12. We see mainly this in insulin-treated people, and again, in creatine-based therapies, uh, negligible rates. Now, going on to the trends of hypoglycemia. There's been a number of studies. This is a really good study from Ontario, mainly older people. And here we see that overall there was an increase in the number of people uh, with hypoglycemia who, ha who were having hospital encounters to about 2006 and then after there was a decrease. Um, 
This is looking at data from England, and again, if we look on the left-hand side, these are young people with hypoglycemia. There seems to have been increased up to 2013. A linear increase, annual incidence increased was 4% from 1998 to 2013. On the right-hand side, if we look at the people who were elderly, uh, older people aged over 65, we see a rise to 2009, and then after that, there's been a decrease from 2009 to 13. But incidents were overall still higher in 2013 compared to, 2000, compared to 1998. This is data from Francesco Zaccardi in our group. And there are a couple of observations here. This is data for the whole of England, uh, admissions for hypoglycemia uh, from 2009 to 2014. We see low rates uh, in the younger age group. Um, mainly because these were people who had type 1 diabetes, and then we see an increase uh, from the age of 40. So at the bottom, you see the change and in increase between 2009 to 2014. The highest increase was in the elderly group, 80 to 89. So there's a linear increase in the proportion of patients by age in terms of hospital admissions for hypoglycemia. The other observation is uh, if we look over the first five years, despite having good therapies with low hypoglycemia risk, there doesn't seem to be a decrease in the proportion of people uh, admitted to hospital with hypoglycemia. And if we look at the HbA1c trends, they haven't really changed to account for this uh, uh, hypoglycemia rates, which I've just shown you. This is a, a, a data that was recently published looking at HbA1c's by first line, second line, third line, and fourth line therapy. And we see the mean uh, six-month HbA1c response to first to fourth line therapies. And for first, second, and third line therapies, there doesn't seem to be much of a, a significant response. However, fourth line therapies, there does seem to be a slight uh, reduction in HbA1c. This is uh, looking at trends in severe hypoglycemia rates in the US. And again, we see severe hypoglycemia rates remained steady from 2006 to 2013. There was a slight decline in the elderly, um, uh, which was significant, but it remained high in people with two or more comorbidities. So in this one, you see at the top people who were on, uh, uh, on uh, um, insulin or sulfonylureas, and the bottom you see people on no medications or other agents having much lower rates compared to those on insulin or sulfonylureas. This is again uh, uh, data from the US by uh, Kasia Lipska showing trends in uh, hospital admissions for hyper and hypoglycemia from 1999 to 2011. And this is a very large study, and what this shows, first of all, is the hospital admission rates for hypoglycemia now exceed those for hyperglycemia, especially among older adults who pose the greatest threat. And the admissions for hypoglycemia increased uh, over the years, but there seems to be now a plateauing. Looking at the same data, for older adults, there was a twofold higher uh, rates of hospitalization for hypoglycemia compared to the younger patients. Uh, and uh, older people uh, being uh, those aged over 75. Now, consequences of hypoglycemia, you all know this. Uh, there are consequences for the brain, for example, seizures, coma, cognitive dysfunction, and strokes. There's also the psychological aspects. Fear of hypoglycemia is very common in people who've experienced hypoglycemia. There are musculoskeletal consequences, such as uh, falls, fractures, dislocations, and um, rarely uh, quite uh, fatal driving accidents. There's consequences for the heart in terms of the association of hypoglycemia with myocardial infarction and arrhythmias. And we know there are circulatory changes very, very quickly following hypoglycemia. For example, uh, inflammation, blood co or coagulation, abnormalities, endothelial dysfunction, and hemodynamic changes. And when we look at global burden of hypoglycemia-related mortality, this is again from Francesco Zaccardi, looking at 109 countries and trends from 2000 to 2014 uh, for death certification. What we see is there is an increase in trends of proportion of hypoglycemia-related deaths in 30 countries compared to those without hypoglycemia, the overall population death rates. And we see here from uh, 2001 to 2014, there's a 60% increase in proportion of hypoglycemia-related deaths compared to deaths uh, overall.
We know from advanced really good study uh, of hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia being associated with a threefold increased risk of major microvascular outcomes, uh, twofold increased risk of major microvascular outcomes, uh, also associations with whole cause death, cardiovascular death, and non-cardiovascular death. But this was in a population uh, in a randomized controlled trials. And this uh, conclusion from this study was that severe hypoglycemia was strongly associated with increased risk for a range of adverse clinical outcomes, and possibly severe hypoglycemia contributes through other mechanisms such as markers of vulnerability. This is data we've looked at in the real-world setting using routine databases showing similar results to what the advanced study found. But here what we see is the epidemiology for type 1 and type 2 diabetes seems to be very, very similar. You could easily superimpose those two graphs. The other thing we found in this study was that people who had had previous established cardiovascular history, they had a two to three-fold increased risk of additional cardiovascular, future cardiovascular events or mortality compared to those who didn't experience hypoglycemia. And just like advance, uh, we found that most of these events occurred within one um, to uh, 15 months. So this is a, a window that we have. If someone has a hypoglycemia, then we really need to do something about it within the first 12 months as otherwise they will have severe consequences, either mortality or cardiovascular event within this period. We know costs are, are increased with hypoglycemia. This is looking at trends for hypoglycemia in the US uh, for hypoglycemia-related hospitalization from 2001 to 2011. As you can see, uh, the average cost for treating the person with hypoglycemia hasn't changed much in the dark bars, but in the light green, what we see is the total annual cost of the hypoglycemia and the other related activities has increased quite sub uh, substantially. Now, just finally on uh, uh, interventions, we need to make sure we choose the right approaches for glucose lowers, lowering that minimize the risk of severe hypoglycemia. We need to make sure that people are educated about avoidance and management of hypoglycemia. And if we take a good history, a patient's history of severe hypoglycemia should lead us to an examination of other comorbid diseases, uh, which may lead to adverse outcomes and, and avoid therapies may that may lead to hypoglycemia. This is just one such study from Winston Crasto from our group who looked at people uh, similar to the Steno uh, 2 study, people with type 2 diabetes and microalbuminuria. This was a multifactorial intervention study. You can see at the top, those in the control arm, there was no change in HbA1c over 18 months. However, those in the intervention arm with the multifactorial intervention had a reduction in HbA1c of 0.5%. However, what we were surprised with was the hypoglycemia rates. First of all, on the right, you see there were no severe hypoglycemia in the intensive group despite having uh, achieved an HbA1c target of less than 0.5% in the intervention group. In the middle, we see that overall the intervention group had low, moderate hypoglycemia. The grade 1 mild hypoglycemia, there were no differences. So we can achieve targets uh, and lower HbA1c with low risk of hypoglycemia. And the way this was achieved in this study was that all patients in the intervention group had self-management education programs to identify their risk of hypoglycemia, also uh, appropriate uh, skills so that they can identify that they are getting the symptoms and then how to manage these symptoms as well. So in summary, I hope I've shown you that hypoglycemia events are frequent in the real world setting. Current studies show no change in trends with few showing declining rates. There are large variation in admission rates uh, from ambulance call outs to uh, uh, emergency department visits and that's why it's very difficult to compare rates for uh, hospital admissions. But our ultimate aim as healthcare professionals should be to reduce rates of hypoglycemia globally through educational and pharmacological interventions given the rising trends and risk of hypoglycemia including aging, frailty and multimorbidity. Thank you very much for joining me today.